Hello and welcome to Adobe Stock Live. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today as we talk about how to create a Halloween image using content from Adobe Stock with a little Adobe Magic and Photoshop and InDesign and putting it all together and showing you just some various things that you can do. Now, of course, um, if you already have great images for Halloween, then you may not need Adobe Stock. And you can, of course, at any time, either use your own images, images from stock, or combine them together to create the perfect holiday or Halloween image in this case. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Again, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat there. I'm kind of watching it off to the side. I uh, see the hellos, and let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm going to switch over to... Actually, let me go to my browser on this computer one more time. Let me go to stock. All right, I'm going to switch over to my computer now. And I've got the Adobe Stock website open. Now, for those of you who are new to stock, you can search at stock.adobe.com or you can actually search inside the products themselves. Uh, so, for example, if I were to just simply do a Hall Halloween search, it will yield probably thousands of images. In this case, 648,702 results, quite a few. And of course, um, you can go into the filters and kind of filter it down from what you might be looking for. So for example, I'm only looking for photos. That will narrow it down. Uh, I don't want any editorial content, so let's hide that. I'm only looking for horizontal images. That will narrow it down. And there are some new filters that are kind of cool uh, that will, they're in beta right now. But for example, if I were looking for things that have more depth of field, meaning the, the background is out of focus and the foreground's in focus, just by changing the depth of field slider, um, I get some, uh, some interesting images and results that way. So definitely can play with that. And of course, <clears throat> there is the vivid color slider as well. So if you're looking for something with a little more punch to it, you can slide that slider. Uh, I can uh, grab images that include people or exclude people. So it's just great to be able to have these filters. So we jump down from two from 600,000 results to only a mere 218,000 results. Still quite a few. But we try to put the most popular best images up front. So that way you don't have to go too many pages deep before finding something pretty cool. Now. If you are just trying to keep it simple and you say, hey, you know what, I, um, I'm not a designer, I'm not good at uh, the, the Photoshop or InDesign, I just want you know, to have an image that's going to pretty much do it all for me, then you will find images like that. For example, like this one, Happy Halloween, it's already got the text on it, the image is there, the pumpkins, ready to go. Or this one, Trick or Treat, kind of ready to go, you wouldn't have to do a lot to it. But I think it's a lot more fun, especially if you do have Creative Cloud to take an image or multiple images together and combine them into something unique. In other words, something that isn't here that you know no one else will have because even if they download the exact same images, they would not put it together the exact same way. So what I start off with is I normally look for like a background and sometimes I'm not really set on which background I want. Like a lot of these already have pumpkins in them, which is kind of cool. Sometimes I like to create my own, so I might get one that sands a pumpkin. So like this one where it's kind of like a creepy forest. Um, and you have the ability to, well, I'm not sure yet, meaning I don't know if I want to pay for this image and use it. So I can save it as a preview and I can save it to any particular uh, Creative Cloud library that I have or download it. So I want to save it to a library that I, call, I have called Adobe Stock. And when I uh, sync that preview to the library, I can sync previews all day long that are watermarked, low resolution, but free for me to experiment with. Uh, I kind of like this orange background as well, so I can sync that. And I've already gone through the process of searching for several images that I want to put together, and I've synced those previews uh, down to my Adobe Stock library. But I wanted to show you here on the website how to do this, because the website definitely gives you the advantage of having more filter choices than just searching inside the products. All right, so now I'll switch over to Photoshop where I've got that same CC library. And as you can see, the two newest backgrounds I, I pulled in are here and ready to go. And I have a couple other creepy forest backgrounds. As a matter of fact, they're called Dark Forest, Dark, dark Foggy Forest. Um, and some other images, some pumpkins, some kids, some other things that I might want to do. 
because I grabbed a bunch of previews as I was scrolling through the pages and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet so that way I just grabbed a bunch that I kind of liked even though I may or may not use them because again I can grab previews for free. You also of course have the ability to search for um, search for Adobe stock right inside your Adobe products. So here in Photoshop if I were to do the exact same thing and type in Halloween then um, it's going to start to bring up those same Halloween images right here in the product. So if I see something that I kind of like, like I kind of like this pumpkin because it might save me the work of having to put the flames in it versus this one where I might want to put the flames in it, but they're not already there. So I can go ahead and grab that preview as well. Um, so whether you're searching on the website, adding previews or licensing images, or whether you're searching in your favorite Adobe product, the process is the same. Find what you want, and then you have the ability to um, add, add the preview or license the image right there on the spot. Now, one more, one more tip on searching that people may overlook in the product is that you'll notice that there's a little twirl down un, or right above the results. If I twirl that down, that also gives me the ability to narrow it down. I don't get as many filter choices, but I can say, you know what, I'm not really looking for illustrations. I'm just looking for photos right now. So just show me photos or maybe I'm just looking for videos, so forth and so on. So you do have some filtering built into the product, but all of the filtering is on the web. Uh, so you can do it either way you want. All right, so now that I've got my um, Halloween uh, uh, images that I may wanna use, now what I can do is start the process of building. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new document, and I'll tell you why in a second. Let's go ahead and create the new document and I'm gonna go ahead and make it for print. And I can either use one of the built-in presets, so I can say view all presets. And let's see if I see the size I'm looking for here. If I don't, don't worry, I'll make it myself and I don't see it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make the width seven inches and the height five at uh, 300 pixels per inch. That'll make it wide. And I'm gonna start with a white background. Doesn't matter because I'm gonna cover it anyway. I'm not working in artboards, and I don't think I need any of the, the advanced options. Uh, actually, I might want to put this in a different color space. Let's use Adobe RGB. Okay, so now that I've got everything set to create that new document, I'm going to go ahead and create it. And the reason I start with a document instead of just double clicking on one of those um, files that I previewed is because, number one, I get the exact size and resolution that I need, especially if I'm trying to fit this in something. And number two, um, if I double click the preview image to edit it and I start working on it, then when I license it, it won't update that way. Now, if I pull it onto an existing canvas, work on it and then license it, then it will work that way. So that's why I don't like to start by double clicking on one of the images. I like to pull them in to a new document or an existing photo. All right, so for example, I've got these two different forests. The only real difference between them is the, kind, the, the color is a little bit different. Uh, and the trees are, of course, a little bit different. But that's really the difference is the coloring. So I kind of like this color, I think, the best. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. Yeah, it looks pretty creepy. And I'm going to go ahead and scale that up and just make that the size that I need. Now, of course, it's still got the Adobe Stock watermark on it. Still got the file number on it. So if you were looking for this exact same file, it would be 11822633. You can search Adobe Stock for that number and that will bring up this exact same file. But anyway, I've got this uh, in place. It still has the watermark and as long as I don't do anything destructive to it, I can always license it at any time. I can license it right now, license it in the middle, license it at the end. I can choose when to license it because I'm not doing anything destructive to it. Now, if I do something destructive to it, I can still go over here and license it, but it won't automatically update my uh, existing document because I've made some pixel changes to it. So as you can see, they come over uh, as smart previews when you drag them in, smart objects, I should say. Uh, so smart objects come in, and that way it's, it's a non-destructive workflow at this point. All right, so I've got my background in place. The background's creepy, got it sized the way I want. Uh, when I license it, the resolution will change. I might need to resize it, but other than that, it looks pretty good. All right, the next thing I want is I want the pumpkin. I like the flames in this one, the candle that's already burning inside this one, but I like the, the, 
creepiness of this one. I just like this one better, even though it's dark. Now, the problem with both of these is they were shot in a studio. So they're not going to look the same as, as the, like if they were in this forest. And that's kind of one of the dead giveaways of composition is when something is super bright and super, you know, different color than the envir environment it's on, people tend to think or not really get that it's a composite. So with that said, uh, knowing that I'm going to have to do some things like that, I'm going to go ahead and um, since I know I want to use this pumpkin, I am going to go ahead and license it so I can do some other things to it. Or maybe not. All right, let's go ahead and license it. So I'll license this image. It will ask me if I want to take away from one of my credits. I have a bunch of credits on Adobe Stock. It did. And now when I pull this one over, I own the right to use this one. This one is um, it's licensed to me, and that way I can use it as much as I want. So when I pull this one over, it does not have a watermark. I can do whatever I want to this image. All right, so let's go ahead and scale it down. It's way too big. Let's get it down to the size I need it to be. Something creepy, like right about there. Pull it down a bit. And now, of course, we need to get rid of its white background, among other things. So it came over on its own layer. It did come over as a smart object. Anytime you bring over a library ob object, it will do that anyway. And now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things. First and foremost, I need to get rid of the white background. Now, the white background is pretty easy in this case. I could just, um, I probably just select it with a magic wand because it's pretty much all white and the rest of it isn't. Now at that point, I could use that magic wand. Oh, I'll just do that backwards. Hold down the option or alt key and add a layer mask just to hide it. Now, by hiding it, there's still an edge there I'm going to get rid of, but by hiding it, that means the white background is still there in case I ever needed it, but I didn't delete it. I didn't get rid of those pixels. Now, of course, uh, I want to get rid of that edge, so we'll use our paintbrush tool. We'll make that brush a lot smaller. We'll use black paint, and we'll just go ahead, and I'm still painting on the mask next to it. We'll just go ahead and paint that out. Let me make sure my mask is way down. There we go. There we go. All right, so now I've gotten rid of that, uh, gotten rid of that edge, and now it looks like the pumpkin's just sitting there, but it really doesn't look like the pumpkin belongs there because it's got this white halo around it. It just doesn't look the right color, so forth and so on. So some of that I can tone down using um, the camera raw filter. So for example, I'll select the image again. I'll go to my filter menu. Um, it's already a smart object, so I don't have to convert for smart filters. I'll go to the camera raw filter. And uh, it, since I just hid the white background, it still shows it here, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and just drop down the um, highlights and whites. So let's bring that down quite a bit. Highlights quite a bit, because we don't want it to be all that shiny out in the dark forest. And we'll definitely bring down the whites. We're just going to really dull this thing down as it would be in that environment anyway. So now we'll go ahead and click OK. And that toned it down quite a bit. Um, still not enough for my taste, but it did tone it down quite a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my uh, dodge and burn tool, my burn tool here. And in this case, I am going to go need to go into the original. I'm just going to go ahead and just burn the edges of the bottom of it there. Because again, if this were sitting not on a piece of white paper, if this were literally sitting in a forest, it would be a lot darker on the bottom. It'd be a lot, probably a lot darker overall, but certainly around the edges, certainly around the bottom, because there would be no bright white light coming into it that way. All right, so now we'll go ahead and just close that, save it, it will update the smart object, yes, and away we go. Okay, that made it, yeah, there we go. Now we got it darker on the bottom, now that looks a little bit more realistic. There's one more thing I'm gonna do to the color of it though, to kind of make it match its background that it's on. So what I'm going to do is take the existing uh, dark foggy forest and make a duplicate of that layer. And then I'm going to pull that layer up to the top above the pumpkin, of course, which will hide it. And I'm going to set that layer to um, blending mode of just color. So when I set it to a blending mode of color, of course, now the pumpkin takes on the exact color of that. I still want some of the orange in there, so I'm just going to lower the opacity of that layer a bit just to really dull that down the way it would normally look. I can also, um, let's see, there's another 
masking issue there. Let's see. Yeah, there's a masking issue there. Let's go ahead and grab the paintbrush. And let's mask the top of that off as well. All right, good. Okay, so now we, or I'm getting there with the pumpkin, kind of getting that the way I want it to look, but I got some other things to work on. I could work on that pumpkin all day, but let's move on because we, we don't have a ton of time left. So next I'm going to pull in these lights. Of course, you're going to say, well, Terry, those lights don't look like they belong there. And you're right, they don't. All right, so anyway, let's do this. Let's pull this down. Actually, I don't need to pull it all the way down. I'm not going to use the bottom part anyway. I got the lights in place, and you're saying, how does that help you again? Let's do a couple of things. First and foremost, let's go to our filter menu. Uh, and again, we don't have to convert for smart filters because it already is a smart object. Let's go to our blur and let's go to our actually our blur gallery. Let's use a field blur. Now, when you use a field blur, that puts this point right in the middle. You can pick it up, move it around, but it's kind of blurring the entire image. I'm going to move it up here. And of course, I can dial up the blurriness dial down the blurriness. I can make that as blurry as I want with the on canvas controls. I want to kind of get that really blurry. But I don't want the rest of it to be blurry, even though I'm not going to use the rest of it anyway. Uh, so if I add another point, I can dial down the blurriness down here. So this it's, it's doing its auto masking, its auto controls of what areas are not blurred or in focus and what areas are now out of focus. All right, so I'll go ahead and render that out. Let's go ahead and click okay on that and next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a mask actually no you know what first we're going to add a blending mode to that let's use kind of like hard light yeah there we go so now see now it doesn't look so bad still bad but not so bad now and now we can go ahead and add a mask another layer mask to that area and of course we want to we can either use a gradient on that mask or we can use a, um, uh, a paintbrush. So let's try a gradient. Grab my gradient tool. Let's pull down that way. Oop, wrong way. Really just, I just want the lights to be at the top. Oop, I don't want to cut off though. Let's go right about there. No, not enough. Right there maybe. Yeah. Kind of that creepy lights are coming from somewhere, but you can't really tell where in the midst of the trees. All right, so we got that in place now. The next thing I want to do is let's get our subject in. Now, I could either use the kids. I got kids. I can pull them in, have them be our stars, or I can have the creepy vampire. Either one. Either one works. The creepy vampire is um probably the coolest easiest way to do it because all i have to do is use a, a mask on that one to blend that one in versus cutting the kids out of the background the kids are in the white background so it would be pretty easy with selected mask but either way so let's go ahead and just pull the creepy vampire in um the creepy vampire we're going to put her off to the side we're going to go ahead and scale her down just a bit and next thing we're going to do is we're going to net actually you know what let's undo that pull her back in one more time do want her to take up the whole side. All right, I want her to take up the whole side from top to bottom because her hair is like her top of her head's cut off. So it would look kind of weird if she wasn't touching the edge. Um, but I don't want all of this existing background. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, commit to that. Let's go ahead and add another layer mask. And we'll just grab our gradient tool. And I always do that the wrong way. There we go. Pull it in that way. And we're just using the gradient tool to mask off that left side. And I don't care if some of her hand is transparent. That's what keeps it even, make it look even a little bit better. Because she's now blending into the background like she was already there. She's also a bit bright for this too. Even though she could be the main subject and of course have a light on her. But I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity of her layer just a bit. Kind of make her blend in just a bit more. And uh, oh, maybe not that much. Maybe more like 95%. There we go. And uh, so she's got semi-transparency going on in her. She's got her creepy look. And of course, I could use that same trick of taking um, this layer up and applying this uh, color mode. Is that the right layer? No, wrong layer. Hold on. Undo this layer. There we go. So I can kind of apply that same color effect to the entire image instead of just 
the uh, image that we had before, but I don't want it to affect the lights. So let's pull the lights up above that, and that way the lights are in, and now they're over our head, which I kind of don't want, so that's okay. We can go ahead and mask them out over our face. All right, so that way the lights are still above the color choice. What am I not doing here? Let's grab our brush tool. Let's go to the mask. Okay. Ooh, tricky part though. Oh, I can't do it that way because then I'd be also, okay, so I have to do it a different way. Hold on. Uh, if I take out the lights, I'm also going to be taking out the color effect as well. So let's keep the lights where they were. And we can do the opposite. We can take the dark forest effect and kind of like just, oh, wait, oh, let's bring it down one more. Bring it down below her. And we could take the dark forest effect off the lights themselves. That would be the easiest way. So let's add a mask to that. And then if I mask out the lights, they will return back to their original orange color, as you can see. That's much easier. That way I get everything. I get the lights behind her, right color, creepy bluish forest over everything else but the lights, and away we go. Okay, so now at this point, last but not least, the only other thing I want to do, let's go back to the pumpkin one more time. I know I can stand at pumpkin all day, but let's go back to pumpkin one more time. Let's go to the pumpkin's mask. Let's zoom in on this a bit. And I want to cut holes out of the eyes, the mouth, and everything else. Right now, that's just black inside of the pumpkin. But I actually want it to be see-through. I want to be able to see the, the, um, the forest behind it. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the mask. I'm going to uh, just go ahead and thank you. Uh, William, I'm glad you like it the way it looks so far. I'm going to go ahead and just come down in here. And I'm just going to mask out the eyes. Oops. And that's okay, I just did an oops because I painted on the pumpkin part. But that's the beauty of a mask is you just switch colors to white and undo your oops. All right, so switch back to black. I'm just painting out or masking out the pumpkin, eyes and mouth and nose. So I can see some of the forest coming through on that. That's okay. And then we bring that back where I overdid it. And then we come in here, this is gonna be kind of harder because I gotta get around the teeth and we're not looking at the mouth at the right angle, but that's okay. All right. Okay, I have sufficiently for the purpose of what I'm gonna do next punched holes in the pumpkin. So now we can see through the pumpkin. Uh, so for example, if I turn off the background layer, we can see the white and I can actually see how bad of a job I did, but that's okay. For what this is gonna be, it does not need to be perfect. And you can also make selections of the shapes and just cut them out that way or mask them out that way. But for this, it does not need to be perfect. But anyway, so now let's turn that back on so we can see behind it. And now because I have that layer behind it, uh, which is the background. I'm going to go ahead and create one more new layer right above it, and we're going to call this layer Flames. All right. Um, actually, Photoshop has a Flames filter, but the way it works is you have to put those Flames on a path in order for it to work. So in order for that to happen, I've got to go in and uh, create that path for it to work. One of the ways that I can do that now is using the new curvature tool. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Curvature tool. I hadn't added it back into my workspace yet because it's brand new. Maybe I have, I don't know, I don't see it. I might need to edit the toolbar to get it back or it might be hiding under the pin tool that's already there. Oh, there it is, curvature pin tool. All right, it's at the bottom, didn't expect it there. So the new curvature pin tool allows you to create paths much more easily using curves than you could before. So for example, I can go click, like we always did with the pin tool, and as soon as I do my second click, once I do my third, it then can allow me to curve it any way I want. So I'm just kind of curving this or clicking this 
uh, around and curving around the mouth on the inside. I don't need to do the nose and the, and the eyes because my flame is going to be tall enough where I don't have to worry about it. All right. Okay, I've got my path. I didn't really need to do that with the curvature tool. I just wanted to introduce the curvature tool as brand new. Now, let me go to my path panel. Let's convert that work path into a path by double clicking on it. We're going to call this flame path. And now that I got my flame path in place, I can go to my filter menu, come down to render, and choose flame. That will bring up the flame dialog box, where I can make the length of my flames taller. I want them to be nice and tall. Maybe not that tall. But we kind of want like a little, little forest fire going on in that thing. All right, so we click OK. And... That should, should have rendered flames on my, on my flames now. Should have rendered flames on my path. Let's try it one more time. Filter, render, flame. Yep, those are the ones I want. And click OK. Unless they're so small, I just can't see them. That could be. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, deselect that path. And let's see if my flames are really there. Sometimes something so small, and plus it's behind something else, I might not be able to see it. So let's. Oh, you know why I can't see it? Because it's behind the forest. <laughs> I want it behind the pumpkin. There they are. All right, so there they are. They were there the whole time. All right, so let's go ahead and actually they look pretty good. Let's go ahead and they're, an, they're on their own layer now so I can move them around and kind of get them the size that I want. There we go. And I don't, it doesn't matter if I distort them a little bit as long as they're not sticking up above the pumpkin. That's why I cut the holes out so that they would show through. All right. So now we're just about there. We are at our finishing point. And if I look at this, I like it. So now I would only license the images that I used, as opposed to licensing everything that I may or may not have used. So for example, if I right click on um, the dark foggy forest, I can go ahead and license that image. And I'm doing that right on the layers panel, that way I don't have to go back to the um, I don't have to go back to the um, library and possibly link the wrong one. This way I know I'm linking, I'm, I'm licensing the ones that I actually used. So let's license the uh, creepy vampire. And that one should license in a second. And then last but not least, I did the forest. Uh, I didn't do the, actually Christmas lights. Let's do the Christmas lights image license. This way I'll get the high res versions of those as well. The flames I built, I did the forest, I did the pumpkin first, I did the lights, I did the vampire, and the forest is being used again. So now I've got my completed licensed image ready to go. So let's do one last thing. Let's go ahead and save this. We haven't done, we, we would have saved all along, by the way. Let's go ahead and save this as Halloween 2017. We'll go ahead and save it to the desktop just so I know where it is for the next step. And let's go to InDesign. And in InDesign, it's going to be very quick. We're going to say Create New. And we're going to use a template. So I went and found a print template. It was actually a thank you card. See, I use that one, but it's not going to be a thank you card. It's going to be a Halloween card. So, but it's the right size, right layout, right everything. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that free stock template, open it up. Here it is ready to go. And I've got the placeholder for my image. Let's go ahead and place that in and we'll go to the desktop and we'll grab the Halloween 27 PSD. I'm not sure why. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know why this thing flipped it around. The template is set to flip. I was going to say, that was weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's scale it down. And if we want it, if, like for example, we could just flip it back the other way. I think we would go very flippy thing on the computer.
control panel. There it is. So we just flip it back the other way if we had to have it the way it was. The template reversed it, but instead of this, we can say happy Halloween. Go. And we get the word happy in there. And if we want just that's only if we wanted to use the same text that was already there, the same placeholder and everything. Otherwise, we just delete this and put it in, put it in our own. All right. So we got our happy Halloween. And of course, we go up here where it says company name and URL. And I'm going to say Terry White. You ever type upside down? Uh, www.terrywhite.com. All right, so my greeting card is ready to be printed and folded, and I've got my happy Halloween ready to go. So with that said, thanks for watching, everyone. Go experiment with Adobe Stock. It is absolutely free to experiment with because you can always download previews and use them and play with them until you get what you want, and then license only what you need to complete the final project. All right, let's see if there are any... Great flames. Yes, the flame filter is awesome. Um, it does have to be on a path. I make it look easy, Carolyn, because it is easy. Practice makes perfect. Adobe Jason's in the house? Oh man, I missed him. Where is he? Adobe Jason's in the house. Did he say anything? Oh, there he is. Uh, great. Thanks, Jason. Glad you like it. And Pandora. <laughs> I'm getting too many tools. All right, there are ways in the project in the products to now uh, just customize the tool panels to what you want, what you want, and will need. All right, I don't see any other questions. Just praise on how it looks, which I appreciate. Thanks everyone for watching. We're way way over the time I wanted to do this in, but I wanted to give you guys something uh, Halloweenish to work on. And of course, oh, I see one more little thing that's bugging me. Let me go back. Hang on. I don't like my pumpkin being cut off. So I'll use the grabber hand here and just pull her up just a bit more. And there we go. All right, now it's ready. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. I'll be back tomorrow on InDesign. So InDesign, which is facebook.com slash InDesign at the same time, 1 p.m. Pacific time. We'll talk about the new typography effects and the new InDesign or typography features and the new InDesign CC 2018. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.